It is now my pleasure to welcome today's presenters, Sandra Galambos, Brad Henry, and Marlena Paul. Sandra Galambos and Brad Henry are both joining us from Northern Municipal Services with Government Relations. Sandra is a Northern Municipal Advisor and Brad is the Executive Director. Marlena or Marnie Paul is a partner with Brownlee LLP and is part of the firm's Municipal Law Group. I'd like to thank Brownlee for sponsoring SUMA's Candidate School. Thanks to Brownlee, all Candidate School sessions are being offered free of charge. I would now like to invite Marlena to bring greetings on behalf of Brownlee LLP. Thank you, Stephanie, and welcome to uh, everyone who's been able to join us so far. We are extremely happy to be here and participate in the SUMA Candidate School. I think it's a great opportunity for potential candidates to learn some of the uh, roles and responsibilities that are involved with uh, being voted to be on council. It's obviously an extremely important job and we're happy here to, to provide a bit of a snapshot into what that role will look like to give you some information to uh, determine whether or not it's, it's something you want to proceed with. It's obviously a very valuable and, and important role and so we want to make sure that you have a good understanding of, of what it will involve before you start uh, putting your name out there for, for nomination. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marnie. I would now like to, and thank you again to Brown Lee for sponsoring today's session. I'd now like to pass it over to Sandra and Brad to get us started. Please welcome Sandra and Brad. Good morning. Um, so we'll get started with the, um, the presentation, hoping everybody can see our, uh, our PowerPoint. Um, we're going to start now with the uh, a little bit of a description on the Northern Saskatchewan Administration District. The NSAD covers approximately half of Saskatchewan's land area. However, it accounts for only 3% of the province's total population. There are over 70 communities located across the north. Our municipal democracy Council makes decisions collectively on what services a municipality will provide to its citizens, how services will be provided, and at what level. Council provides leadership and makes policies to govern using resolutions or bylaws. Once decided, administration is responsible for implementing the policies. Mayor presides over council meetings, is a member of all committees and bodies and acts as a face for the municipality. Imposes property taxes, fines, and bylaws. The role of administrator. Council relies on the support, legislative, legislative advice, and assistance of administration during decision-making process. Ensures council's policies are implemented manages day-to-day -day operations, provides financial management and the overall administration of the municipality. Administration also provides notice of council and committee meetings to members of council and the public. The role of council. There's a council member's handbook that's available that is very thorough and provides a lot of valuable information. We will post this uh, in the chat, the link to actually access this handbook. They're particularly of interest are pages five, six, seven, and eight. I'm gonna try and bring them up. While Brad is working with that, I will read some important excerpts from those pages. The role of councils, duties and responsibilities of councils. Council is elected to make decisions for the municipality about services, policies, and programs. Council members have an equal voice at the council table. Every council member has one vote. A majority vote is required to make a council decision. A council decision is the decision of the municipality. All council members 
need to respect that decision even when they did not vote in favor. And that's really important to keep in mind. Council develops and evaluates policies and programs, is accountable to the public for the decision it makes, and makes sure that the municipality acts within the law. Duties and responsibilities of individual council members. As a member of council, you cannot be an employee of the municipality, along with any other um, committees or corporations connected to the municipality. As a member of council, you must represent the voters and consider the well being and interests of the municipality, participate in council committee and other body meetings and ensure that the administrative procedures and policies are in place to implement council decisions. You need to become very familiar with the council procedures bylaw, which is a mandatory bylaw that the municipality needs to have in place. And it's Basically, um, it establishes written rules of conducting business at meetings for council members, administrators, and the public to follow. A lot of the uh, duties and responsibilities of the council members are in section 106 of the NMA, which is the Northern Municipalities Act. The duties and responsibilities of the mayor has the same legislative duties and responsibilities as all other council members. But along with, he has to preside or she, they have to preside at a council meeting when in attendance on this council has passed a bylaw for another member to preside at the meeting. Votes on all resolutions and bylaws before council is a member of council committees and all bodies established by council unless Council provides otherwise. Uh, duty to res respect confidentiality. Council members may be privy to third party or confidential information and must keep matters discussed in confidence, private, uh, unless, or pardon me, until they are discussed in a public forum. Another very, very important. Um, Requirement. Okay, I think that was all. Okay, the next one. The next one. Uh, uh, next slide, please. The next slide is going to uh, talk, address the legislative framework. The Northern Municipalities Act 2010 is a provincial legislation that creates all Northern municipalities. The purpose of a Northern municipality is to provide good governance, provide services and infrastructure that council feels are necessary and desirable for all or part of the municipality. Develop and maintain a safe and viable community foster economic, social, and environmental well-being, and provide wise stewardship of public assets. Municipalities have natural person powers and governmental powers. Authority to buy and sell land, entering contracts for services or tendering, impose property taxes, fines, and enforce bylaws. Twenty twenty four is a general election year. Councils in northern municipalities have the option to hold their general election earlier than Wednesday, November thirteenth. The but it has to be done prior, or at least ninety days prior. So, being the fourteenth of August, any uh, option to. Uh, change the date other than November 13th has expired. But if elected, the term of office is four years for all council members elected. 
the eligibility of a candidate must be at least 18 years of age on the day of the election, not disqualified pursuant to this or any other act, Canadian citizen at the time that he, she submits the nomination paper and public disclosure statement, resides in Saskatchewan for at least six consecutive months immediately preceding the date on which he, she submits the nomination paper and resides in that municipality or on land now that is in that municipality for at least three consecutive months immediately preceding the date on which he or she submitted the nomination. The disqualification piece, uh, persons who are not qualified to be nominated or elected as a member of council include a judge of a court and the auditor or solicitor of the municipality. A member of council who is disqualified loses eligibility, misses two meetings in three months, makes a false declaration, convicted or removed from office by the minister. From council pursuant to this section is not eligible to be nominated or elected in an election for any municipality until the earlier of 12 years following the date of the disqualification and the date of any pardon obtained with respect to the disqualification pursuant to a conviction. Nomination. So nominations are to be the Wednesday that is five weeks before election day. At least 10 business days before nomination day, the returning officer will call for nominations. All interested candidates should check with their administrate with the administration of the municipality on what these specific dates are. This is done by, by preparing uh, your nomination is done by preparing Form H notice of call of nominations and posted in a local newspaper or electronic media. So if your municipality has uh, a website, be sure that you visit it regularly for uh, updates and, and required information. Nomination forms should be obtained from the municipal office. Election officials must accept the completed prescribed form and candidates acceptance. Forms, I must be signed by the candidate and witnessed by two people. Not, they do not need to be voters for nominations. They just need to be witnesses. And the signature of five nominations is required. Nominators, pardon me. So signatures of five nominators is required before you uh, submit your uh, form, and uh, the witness does not have to be a voter or nominator. Public disclosure statements. Uh, this is a very, very important um, addition to submitting the uh, nomination form. What it does, and that's also available from the uh, your municipal or your administrator. Identifies employment, financial interests, business interests, and property holdings of a person or a person's family. Must accompany a nomination form when running for office. Must be completed again within 30 days after being elected. Requires an annual declaration by November 30th, and council members must make amendments within 30 days of any change. And this document is publicly accessible. Conflict of interest. Existence of a COI is not evidence of wrongdoing. Importance is how a COI is handled. Consider perception of public. Trust in your fellow council members to make the decision. Contraventions handled under the Code of Ethics bylaw. So how uh, this is another uh, very, very important bylaw and mandatory that uh, your municipality needs to have in place. It's the Code of Ethics bylaw. Oath or affirmation of council must be completed before carrying out any power, duties, or function of office before the first meeting of the newly elected council. Required under the Northern Municipality Act 
qualified to hold office, have not, will not receive any payment or reward for collection, has read and understand the code of ethics, rules of conduct and uh, procedures applicable. So again, that code of ethics bylaw administration, once you've been, um, if elected, administration of the municipality should provide a copy of that bylaw along with the uh, council procedure bylaw to each uh, council member. Um, part of the oath of office is that the councillor and mayor promises to perform the duties of office. We'll disclose any conflict of interest and when comply, will comply with the code of ethics, rules of conduct and procedure as per the act and my accounts. Code of ethics bylaw is required by law that defines how council members behave with each other, employees and the public. Includes at a minimum, the model code of ethics under the Northern Municipalities regulation, which include honesty, objectivity, respect, transparency and accountability, confidentiality, leadership and public interest, responsibility. Bylaw includes a process of dealing with contraventions. That's all that we have uh, prepared with uh, within our slide presentation here. Uh, we would also like to uh, bring to uh, the attendees attention that the council members handbook, there's going to be a link if Brad hasn't already put that in the, uh, the chat. And then also there's um, a, another uh, document that's uh, it's called Considered Running for Municipal Council. And this is another, it's in, going to be included in another link that uh, we attached it. And we really encourage um, attendees and any other uh, individuals who view this uh, after this date is to go there. And there's YouTube videos available at that site that go through, a lot of it will be um, similar to what we've discussed today, uh, but it, there's also an additional uh, pieces of information in there that's very, very important. So if you could attend uh, and view those YouTube videos, that would be great. So at the uh, end of our uh, presentation, our contact information is there. Um, and so feel free to give us a call if there's anything more that you think we can help you out with. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Sandra and Brad. We appreciate you taking the time to share that information with our attendees. I'd now like to invite Marnie to present on behalf of Brownlee. Please help me welcome back, Marnie. Perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. I will share my screen. So uh, I'm hoping that's the, the main slides there. And so what I'm going to be doing today is going to be, it's going to be a lot of somewhat similar information that Sandra just went through, because I think there is a, a common theme to a lot of the discussion points with respect to the matters and ideas to be, you know, considering when you're considering whether or not you're going to run for uh, council for your municipality. But what I'm going to do today is just provide a bit of a snapshot of some of the information that it'll be good to be aware of, some places that you can do some additional, you know, reviewing on your own time. As Sandra mentioned, uh, online you'll be able to find a ton of resources that have been that have been published and made available to candidates and counselors there's a lot of really valuable information there that I think it would be important to take the time to review I think making the decision to run uh, you know should take some some time and some consideration and, and then you'll be well prepped should you you know, uh, be elected to be on council, you'll be well prepped to sort of hit the ground running. The first, you know, 30 to, to 90 days is going to be a lot of information to take to take in if you are successfully elected. So uh, to know some of this information up front or at least have an awareness of it, I think will give every candidate a really good start with respect to their term. 
So just uh, to provide a little bit of information about uh, Brownlee, I did the introduction, but I'll just do a bit of a snapshot of who we are. We are, I would say, the largest municipal law firm in Western Canada. So our firm only serves uh, Saskatchewan, uh, Alberta, and British Columbia, as well, as well as a little bit in the Northwest Territories. We are mostly municipal law, and then the other part of our practice is insurance defense work, where we also work for municipalities and their insured matters. So our firm is extremely familiar with municipal matters every aspect of a municipality, whether or not it's bylaw enforcement, corporate matters, council governance, that we have specialized teams that are broken up into different areas so that we can ensure that we're giving you the best possible legal advice that your municipality might require. Uh, we are, just to highlight, a Sumer Central, SUMA Central Source Partner. As part of that partnership, what we have done as a firm is we have made available a municipal helpline that is a, a toll-free number that we have available to members of SUMA in Saskatchewan that are able to call that line, be connected with a lawyer at either our Edmonton office, Calgary office, or soon to be our, our Regina office that we'll be opening and we'll, have, we'll be available there to answer your questions on a non-billable basis, essentially the first 30 minutes to discuss whether uh, a file needs, uh, needs actual legal advice or if it's something that can be addressed on a non-billable basis just for some, for some initial guidance. So we are very proud of the partnership that we have with SUMA and this helpline I think has been a beneficial feature that we've been able to offer that I think is utilized more and more each year that we've had it open. So just a brief overview of some of the topics I'm going to touch on today. Again, this is going to be a very high level review of some of the issues and information that every councillor should know about. Again, the, the Northern Municipalities Act is a, a very large piece of legislation. There are many other pieces of legislation that also apply with respect to uh, a councillor's role on council, how council operates, how the municipality operates. So again, this is a very sort of high level review just to give you a bit of an introduction on the information that you might be able to do some further research on to, to get some more information. But what I'm going to go through today briefly is applicable legislation, the role of a counselor on council, the importance of your role in managing finances for the municipality, uh, avoiding conflicts of interest, and uh, information about processes and procedure and then where to find those. So the first thing, obviously, with respect to being part of a municipality, being on a council, is, is that it's important to be aware that municipalities are what we call creatures of statute. So the only authority that a municipality has is the authority that's been granted to it by provincial legislation. So the provincial legislation is supposed to be interpreted quite broadly, so the, the, the authority is quite broad, but it's just important to remember that the authority that that where the jurisdiction that your municipality is going to have on a particular issue is going to be found in the applicable legislation. So that's why it's important to be aware what legislation applies to your municipality so that you know where you can look for, for an initial piece of guidance. Uh, so in this respect, and, and Sandra already touched on this and you might already be aware of this, but for Northern Municipalities in Saskatchewan, the number one piece of legislation is the Northern Municipalities Act 2010. Uh, it is one that you should be very familiar with. You should, it's not necessarily the most exciting material to read, but is the material that will sort of give you that initial information with respect to your role uh, and, and the other members of your team, their role in pushing municipal operations forward. So it outlines how a municipality can operate, how councils function, how citizens can engage with their municipality, how they can ask questions, how they can participate in hearings. Um, and it also very clearly outlines your role should you be successfully elected to sit on council. The other really important piece of information or important piece of legislation for you to be aware of is going to be the Local Authority Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. This is going to be the general act that outlines the rules and policies on access to information and a municipality's role in protecting the personal information that it handles on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So there's some very strict guidelines and, and rules with respect to how private information must be handled, stored, shared, et cetera. Obviously, protection of private information is extremely important. And this piece of legislation is a starting point for understanding a municipality's role and how they will best accomplish protecting people's personal details. The other uh, pieces of legislation that are, are important to be aware of as you, as you head into the election cycle is going to be the Local Government Election Act. And then in Saskatchewan, we also have a separate planning uh, legislation with respect to planning and development matters, and that's gonna be the Planning and Development Act. So those are two additional pieces of legislation that you should definitely uh, be aware of and, and uh, consider reviewing if, if either of those uh, you know, planning and development is, interests you. Um, and with respect to uh, putting yourself up as a candidate, the Local Government Election Act is obviously quite important as well. So in being a counselor and understanding your role, which is obviously a very important role, but it's also a very distinct role. And, and that is something that you will see very often emphasized these days with respect to governance matters in orientations when you first start. As you go throughout your term as a counselor, it is something that I assume you will be reminded of very often because what we are seeing right now with respect to a lot of municipalities is sometimes those roles or an understanding of those roles is becoming blurred. And that is causing some friction at a municipality, especially between a counselor and its administrator or its CAO. Uh, so it's very important to understand that your your role is broad and your role is, is very important as a as a policymaker as the as the group that pushes municipality forward. But it's also important to understand that you must respect the role of your administrators and your staff and the state the distinct way that they can help do their job and sort of stay out of out of their way to be able to do their job. So when uh, a person generally is considering running to be on a council. What we find oftentimes is, is there are passionate individuals. They are individuals who care greatly for their municipality. They may have an interest in, in development matters. They have, may have an interest in bylaw matters. They may have, you know, any number of interests that they'd like to bring to the table. You know, you want to shape how your government moves forward. You want to support your community, whether or not it's nonprofit groups, whether or not it's commercial development, uh, and you want to be able to, to see change. There's likely a change that maybe you're interested in pushing forward. And, and those are all excellent, excellent reasons to, you know, put yourself forward to be on council. The, the role requires people with passion, people with a great interest in, in uh, creating viable and, and um, vibrant communities. But to do that, you also need to understand the, the also the other pieces of your responsibility when you're in that role. So, you know, obviously you'll be voting on bylaws and resolutions. That's likely a very potentially obvious role that you'll play. Uh, there is very strict requirements with respect to your obligation to attend public meetings. You know, you are expected to be there at the table. Uh, actively participating in discussions and, and debates on matters and then voting on matters. So you do have to be someone who has the availability in your schedule and your time to be able to be available for council meetings. They're generally set ahead of time, but there might be meetings that you know have to happen um, on, a, on a special basis. And so you may have to be available you know, for, for certain urgent matters. So just to be aware that there is a, an obvious time commitment involved You'll, be, uh, you'll help define policies and, and the direction that the municipality will go to, and, and you'll be giving your municipal administration action plans to sort of see your goals as a council move forward. You, the, the, the big piece or the most important piece that must always be remembered is you always have to act in good faith. So you always have to be acting in the best interest of your municipality. You can't be acting with any ulterior motives or anything that might personally benefit you or your family members, either financially or, or in another respect. And that's where the conflict of interest matter comes into play. So that acting in good faith and in the best interest of your municipality has always got to be top of mind when you are participating in debates and, and voting on decisions. And then finally, one of your other big roles is obviously going to be the financial integrity of your municipality. So those are pretty, pretty hefty obligations, but luckily you will have professional advice. You will have an administrator that will guide you through those, those processes and decisions. But just to be aware that you do play a very important function in, in propelling your municipality forward. 
So with respect to your roles on council, again, um, a lot of the times the, the place to look for the baseline understanding of what your roles and responsibilities are is going to be the, M, the NMA, which is the Northern Municipalities Act, and that's going to be section 106 that details uh, what your roles and responsibilities are as a counselor. In the NMA, you're also going to find the roles and responsibilities of your administrator. You're also going to find a whole host of obligations and uh, information with respect to how your council is to run, the obligations that you are to follow, and um, the jurisdiction of, of the decisions that you're able to, to handle. So then again, obviously, and, and I, this is a very high level review, but it is very worth mentioning. Municipalities are, uh, you know, they are responsible for the, the public purse. So you are responsible for public taxpayers dollars, how you're going to spend those dollars, how you're going to ensure that your municipality stay in, sustains as a, a viable community. And so what you need to remember is that as a council, you are going to spend a lot of time looking at numbers and trying to understand the financial implications of your decisions, the policy decisions that you're making, the resolutions that are being passed and the, the direction that you're giving to your administration. And so what you must do as a counselor then is, is balance your desire for municipal services with the amount of property taxes that are gonna be charged, the user fees that you might require for, for public infrastructure and for public facilities, um, and then with an understanding of what your local residents are willing to pay. So it's a constant sort of understanding of, of the finances, spending, you know, the municipal funding as per your budgets, as per the goals that have been set, and then understanding, you know, how do we want to, how do we want to grow some of those funds? Where do we want to be going? And, and what are the cost implications? So it's, it's a constant understanding of, of the financial matters and, and ensuring that you are protection, protecting that financial integrity of your municipality. So the other big piece, and I mentioned this at the, the top of the presentation, is going to be a, a a solid understanding of role clarity and an appreciation of your role in the municipal structure. So this is just sort of a snapshot that um, I thought put a, a good good label on, on how some municipalities are generally organized and how some of the decision making is going to flow through to your municipality. So obviously you'll have your mayor and your council are, are going to be at the top. Uh, receiving information. There could almost be a, an arrow going up as well on this image. So you're receiving information up and then your decision making down. And so as council make decisions at, at council at council meetings, as part of the public hearing process, et cetera, as they receive information from staff, from their administrator, feedback from the public, they will then make decisions and those decisions will go through the CAO and then eventually make their way down to the facilities and infrastructure and programming that your municipality has in place. And that's all at the bottom there, uh, depending on the size of your municipality. Obviously, some of these will be uh, infrastructure that you'll operate. Some of them might be operated by a third party, but it just goes to show how that information or those decision makings flow downwards um, and how, how you'll receive information as part of your role on council. And I think the biggest thing to remember as well is that it's always your right as a counselor to flag a matter that you perhaps don't feel like you have enough information on. If staff has presented a report or if they've gone out and received a legal opinion and there's still a, a question that's itching at you or, or something that you feel has not been answered completely, you are well within your authority su to suggest that further information be provided before a decision gets made. So I think the thing to remember is you wanna make sure that in order to be making those good faith decisions in the best interests of your municipality, that you have all the information that you feel you need in order to make that decision. So just to make sure that you, you play a role in, in requesting information, but then the flip side of that is sometimes you also need to trust that the information that has been given to you by professionals, accountants, lawyers, engineers, uh, that what they are giving you is, is full information, is well thought out information. So again, it becomes a bit of a balancing act to try to ensure that you feel fully informed while also trusting some of the professional guidance that you've been offered. 
But with respect to role clarity, again, I think one of the most important things to remember is that as council, you are the policymakers. Council is the one that sets the direction for the municipality. It makes financial decisions. It sets strategic plans and goals for the municipality. And then what you will do as a council is you will turn around and you will give your CEO those goals, those instructions, that information, so that the CEO can then take that information and turn around and direct its staff and um, ensure that the operations side of your municipality is doing what it has to do. And with respect to reporting back, the CEO will gather the information and, and assess how its staff is doing the job. And then the CEO will then report back to council. And the important thing to remember is that the administrator or CAO is your only employee as a council. So it is not the council's job to give direction to staff. It's not council's job to go to public works employees and, and tell them how to do their job. All of that information should be flowing through your CAO, and then your CAO is the one to be given direction to the staff, and your CAO is also the one that is then um, held accountable by council. So it's just very important to keep keep those roles clear. And again, that 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 also suggests that I talk about this a little bit later on the very important. Um, relationship between a council and their CAO, because obviously, as the go between, uh, between the operations side and the policy side of your council, you want to make sure that you have a very strong CAO in the middle, that is giving, giving direction to council, but also then ensuring that the staff is doing the job that they need to be doing. And when this, this role clarity and this separation of roles is very clear for everybody in your municipality, uh, operations and, and the way your municipality is governed tends to be a lot healthier than when that line becomes blurred. That's oftentimes where we see the biggest issues and the biggest conflict is when council starts to dip their toes a little too far into the operations side. Uh, that's where we tend to see the most issues on a, on a council, uh, council operations side of things. So as was mentioned by Sandra, obviously avoiding conflicts of interest is extremely important as, as your role on council is to make sure that you're always acting in the best interest of your municipality. What that does mean is when you're voting on matters and when you're discussing matters, you are essentially asked to put the public interest ahead of your own private interests, which is why the conflict of interest rules are in there. So if you do have a conflict, if you have any interest in a matter that is being discussed in front of council, you are required to disclose that matter. You are uh, required to abstain from discussing the matter, from participating in any debates or votes on the matter. Um, and uh, you are prevented from even trying to persuade your fellow councillors from voting a specific way on that matter. So it's really in how you handle it, handled it, as Sandra mentioned, just because you have a conflict is not the concern. Obviously, you likely live in your municipality, there are going to be issues that may arise where you uh, are going to have a conflict where you might have a direct interest in a decision that council makes. And so you'll just want to make sure that you disclose it, because a failure to disclose could potentially lead to a disqualification, which obviously we want to avoid. So it's best to, to flag it if you're unsure to flag it to step back from the conversation and to allow the, the rest of your council to, to make a decision that uh, is going to be in the best interest of the municipality and, and won't be potentially um, have concerns with respect to your personal interest in that matter and your personal desire for the vote to go out one way. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that there are specific exceptions with respect to if the, if the matter affects you as a general taxpayer, as a general resident of the municipality, that generally will not be elevated to being a conflict of interest. Again, if everyone is a, a resident of a municipality, they do have a general interest in tax rates, for example. But if everybody on council raised a conflict of interest with respect to tax rates, then we wouldn't have quorum or, or a council to make a decision. So if it's a general, a general interest as a, as a general taxpayer in a municipality, that's not going to raise to the level of being a conflict of interest. It's going to be more those those personal impacts, those financial implications on yourself, uh, direct family members, employers, etc., where you're going to want to uh, flag that and, and uh, withdraw from any participation in that decision. So 
this is likely goes without saying, but again, you'll you'll be reminded of this likely throughout your term if, if you are uh, successful in being uh, elected, is that one of the other big keys, key, key pieces uh, serving on council is that teamwork is, is gonna be something that you're gonna have to be respectful of and, and very aware of. You're gonna be coming to council as a, as a passionate member of your municipality, as will every other council member on, on your council. So everybody has passions, everybody has specific reasons for being there, initiatives they wanna push forward, matters they wanna have potentially addressed in a different way. And when you put passionate people in a room together, uh, sometimes there can be disagreements and, and that's part of the process. But I think the, the biggest thing you have to keep in mind when attending council meetings is to come to it with an open mind, to try to come to it with your own opinions and your own ideas. And, and that's perfectly fine. That's what we, we want. We want municipalities to have varying opinions and, and for people to be passionate about those positions. But then you also, once you come to the council table, have to come with an open mind and sort of be able to listen to your fellow councillors and, and their passions and their reasons why they think a decision might be different. You obviously have to respect everyone's opinions. Um, you know, you again, you don't have to agree with them. Uh, that is how often a healthy council might operate is that there are varying views, but it's the respect fee, the respect piece that has to be that has to be uh, there at all times. And then again, disagreements are going to be going to be common. You know, you you want to be able to hash out issues. You want to be able to have healthy debates on matters, respectful and healthy debates. Um, but just be aware that you know disagreements are going to happen, and, and varying opinions are going to be there. And and to have a homogenous group of counselors, although might be good for for pushing certain matters forward, it also doesn't allow for diversity of thought and doesn't allow you know new ideas to come up which we can all be a little adverse to change but sometimes having you know some of those newer ideas at the table allows for innovation and growth so to keep those those ideas in mind and my next slide is just sort of a summary of that uh, this was a quote that i had pulled from adam grant uh, who is an orga organizational psychologist in the united states who's quite quite popular on podcasts these days and his position on, on debates I thought was a good one and a good one to keep in mind when sitting on council. A good in it, he says, a good, a good debate isn't about one person declaring victory. It's about both people making a discovery. Good faith debate is not an attack. It's an opportunity to sharpen your ideas. So I think if you can go to council meetings, especially contentious, you know, council meetings where content, contentious issues are gonna be discussed, to keep this in mind, I think is sometimes a good good mindset to be in when you're you're aware that you're likely walking into a, a lively and active debate. So, with respect to before you before you run for council and and once you're on council, I think these are two pieces of uh, bylaws that your municipality will have in place that they should have published on their website that it would be good for you to review because it'll give you sort of a, a snapshot or an understanding of how your municipality likely operates or, or will operate while you're on, uh, on for your term. So we have the procedure bylaw. So this will define and, and clarify meeting procedures for council. It'll generally outline meeting schedules, how meetings are run, how voting will work, uh, virtual attendance at meetings, whether or not that's authorized, et cetera. So that's a good place to start to just sort of understand what, what your commitment with respect to meetings is going to look like. The other one to be aware of, as Sandra touched on, is going to be your code of ethics or a code of conduct. Every northern municipality in Saskatchewan has to have a code of conduct in place. And this is going to be the document that's going to define the standards and values that council expect, me expects members of council to comply with in their dealings with each other, with employees of the municipality and with the public. So again, this is a good document to review so that you can understand some of those obligations that you'll be expected to meet in your behaviors, in your interactions and during your attendance at meetings. So then just as a, a final thought, and, and again, sometimes some of this goes without saying, but it's always good to highlight. And uh, as I mentioned previously, if, if if you are unsure about something, it's always good to, to ask questions. It's always good throughout your term to be open to learning and, and educating yourself. Uh, when you are elected, your first 30 days or even you know six months is gonna be a very steep learning curve. It's gonna be a lot of new information, 
a lot of new legislation that you may not have been aware of. So there's gonna be lots of opportunities for you to educate yourself, to ask questions, to get oriented, um, and just give yourself that time to learn. Uh, but you'll wanna make sure that you're active in that learning process. There's likely workshops you can sign up for, conferences you can attend throughout your term so that you can you know, network, meet people, find potential mentors that can help you, uh, you know, understand, find people who have been on council for a while and sort of get a sense of how they have been, they have been managing the, the discussions and the potential conflicts and the balancing of, of the role that you serve and sort of get some guidance there. So it's always best to just be continuing to educate yourself and continuing to have an open mind. And then again, uh, when in doubt, always ask questions because I think Questions are going to be the, the conduit to you making those good faith decisions that you're comfortable with and that you're sure that you've done sort of the best that you can to, to make the best decisions for, municipal, for your municipality. And the expectation is not that you make the best decision, the 100% guaranteed best decision. The expectation is that you inform yourself, you understand the issues, and that you make an informed decision that in your mind is in the best interest of your municipality. And that brings me to the end of, of my presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Marnie. And thank you again to Sandra and Brad um, and all of you for being here today to share your expertise with us. I hope attendees and those watching the recording were able to gain some valuable insights and takeaways from the presentations. And thank you again for joining. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day.